Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. California, how much we greatly appreciate your presence here today. This is a particularly significant. <laughs> Vice President George Bush is, was flat on its back and he lifted us up and he made us stand tall throughout the world. came back, when you turn, I'm a lighthouse. <laughs> Candidates can send out their messages and try to move the voters, but in the end, 
The great American public does not move. Instead, the public decides. The people choose the candidate who will steer the truest course and most closely follow the beacon of light that represents our fundamental values and the truths that we hold dear. That's what we mean. I get a great deal of pressure many times when I have an opportunity to speak. Remarkable about ours. But all those other constitutions are documents containing many of the same things ours does, except that it's the government that is telling the people. Long Beach is about beginnings. That was where I had my first meeting with George Duke Majin. And from here, he became one of the greatest governors in the history of California. Yeah. And in my first campaign for governor 22 years ago, Orbach elected to the United States yeah. Congress. Dornan, who's here today, All right. and who just educated me when I came on deck, because I rode in that thing in 19... <laughs> Enjoy it. Well, and give our great governor, give him Don Kanabi for the state senate, and, uh, and state senators Bob Beverly and Bill be the most important ones cast in America. They will determine how California goes, and California may send the next president to the White House. So, so tell me, each one of you tomorrow, to help turn out the vote for the man at the top of the ticket. George Bush. Yes, this is... together to rebuild our economy, to get America on the move again, to make the United States once again the great arsenal of democracy, a light unto the nations, the champion of freedom around the world. During the eight years that we've worked side by side in the White House very well, George Bush is that man. When, when, when Vice President Bush, all of those thousands that are getting their education yet, all of those people that are retired, so all are considered in that poll, that pool. Well, 62.7% of that population pool today is employed. Yeah. Yeah. Values of faith and family that make ours a great nation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the family is the bedrock of America. Uh, George Bush believes that public school... ...believes that we must have George, I mean, believes that we must have judges who interpret the law, not rewrite it. ...allies stood firm in the face of Soviet missiles pointing at the heart of Europe and Asia. And Mr. Gorbachev got the message. He did business because we meant business and we still mean business. Now tomorrow, I feel confident that the people of the United States are loyal, wise, capable, and compassionate. And there is one man who has the experience to be president. That man is George Bush, and on November 8th, if you make it possible for him to... <laughs> and in the last two years, while he cut the federal deficit by... Well, we cut the federal deficit by a third, his budget gap ballooned. And what about taxes? He opposed his state's version of our Proposition 13. He's raised taxes seven times. And on the other hand, what we believe, the policies of limited government, the flag of the United States. You know, standing here, as I've already told you, I was once a passenger on...
suddenly she's no longer looking at us. She's looking beyond us into memory. And there are a couple of tears appearing. And she said, it was a Christmas Eve. And you know, we were all alone and feeling a bit let down. And suddenly the door opened and they burst into the place. She said they had presents for me and Pop. And this time, as I say, the tears were really coming down. And she said, yes, big strapping lads they was from a place called Iowa. <laughs> well, one of the big strapping lads who served in that war was a man named George Bush. He flew... He flew 58 combat missions in the Pacific. He was the Navy's youngest pilot and was decorated for his heroism. Many years later, in 1980, Iowa. Ladies and gentlemen, America needs the strength, the vision, and the true grit of George Bush. Some say that it's time for a change. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are the change. It, it began aiming to get others out to vote. And getting out to vote could be the difference between victory and defeat. Tomorrow's the day. It's the final game of the World Series. It's the Olympics. It's the Super Bowl, all rolled into one. And if you would, I hope you'll just win one more for the Gipper. From my bottom of my heart, thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. been so kind and I've heard you say four and eight and so forth in a number of years may I just say one thing to you when I get out of the job so nobody can think I'm doing it for myself I'm gonna do everything I can to see if we can't rise up and get rid of that amendment because it's an infringement on your democratic right all Californians it's a great privilege for me to present this to the president see what is on the side of the ship. It reads, Voyage to Victory 88. visiting 16 key states on behalf of his vice president, A2. The president has traveled... The president has traveled 25,000 miles visiting 16 key states on behalf of George Bush. But none was more sentimental than his last stop. All right? Yes, All right? Okay. Let's go. 
a present. You ready? The president has traveled 25,000 miles visiting 16 key states on behalf of George Bush. But none meant more than his sentimental last stop. The president has traveled 25,000 miles visiting 16 key states on behalf of George Bush, but none meant more than his sentimental last stop.